Just mention a few things. <clears throat> the Prophet sallam, he said in a rigorously authenticated hadith of Bazaar, sound hadith, absolutely sound, تُعْرَدُ عَلَيَّ أَعْمَالُكُمْ That your deeds are presented to me. When وَجَدْتُ خَيْرًا حَمِدْتُ اللَّهِ and if, they, if I see good, I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When wajadu ghayra dhalik, when wajadu sharran, astaghfartu lakum, aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. And if I see other than that, or in another narration, if I see evil, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is rahmatil lil alameen, even after his passing. According to the opinion of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu passed as a shaheed. He commented to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha on the day of his passing. I can still feel some of the tinge of the poison on my palate that was given to me by the Jewess of Bani Nadir. So he says he was given the honor of shahada. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about a shuhada? What does he say? وَلَا تَقُولُ لِمَا يُبْتُلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الْأَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَا there was a uh, rabbi named Samuel ben Yehuda al Maghribi. His father was from Fez in Morocco. Uh, he's a student of Abraham ben Ezra, who is the Jewish equivalent of someone like Imam al Ghazali, right? Big, big kibar of the ulama of the, of the rabbis. And he died in 1167 of the Common Era. And he studied Islam. He was raised in Andalusia. And he was familiar with the tariqah of Tabari and the works of Abu Hanifa and all of the malahib and the aqaid and all of these types of things. And he narrates in his autobiography, he wrote a book called Ibham uh, al-Yahud or something like that. Uh, he narrates in his biography that he went to sleep one night and he saw a dream of an old man with a long white beard sitting under a tree. And he approached the man and the people around him said, this is the prophet Samuel was mentioned in the Torah, or in the uh, Tanakh, I should say. And they started having a conversation in the Arabic language. And Samuel says to Samuel, Rabbi Samuel, he said, didn't, he said, didn't you hear what Adonai Eloheinu, the Lord our God, says in the Torah? So what did he say? He says, Navi akim lahim mikarav achayim kumucha, alev yishma'um, that I shall raise up a prophet from among the brethren of the Israelites who's going to be like Moses and you must heed him, you must listen to him. And so Rabbi Samuel said, yes, that's referring to you. That's what I've been told by my teachers, right? This is, this is you, isn't it? And the prophet Samuel, according to his dream, he becomes angry and he leaves. <laughs> so then he wakes up and he can't explain what happened. So he goes back to sleep. And this time the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he comes to him in a dream. We know from the hadith, which is mutawatir, is multiply attested, absolutely sound, the strongest type of hadith possible. Dalil qat'i cannot be denied. Man ra'ani fil manami faqat ra'ani finna shaytana la yatamathrubi. Aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa whoever sees me in a dream has seen me, truly has seen me. In another tradition, man ra'ani fil manami faqad ra'al haqq. Whoever has seen me in a dream has seen the truth. Shaitan cannot imitate my form. And then he becomes Muslim during this time. He wakes up and he says shahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He can send the ruh of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherever he pleases. Inna Allah ala kulli shaykhin qadir. This is totally conceivable for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who rahmatul mawla, Sayyidi Habib Umar bin Hafid al Husseini. May Allah preserve him. He says in the Mawlid, Who rahmatul mawla, the Prophet sallam, is the mercy of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest uh, demonstration of Allah's mercy after creating us is the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The greatest demonstration of his mercy. So this is a personal deity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a personal God. Aristotle believe that it's impossible for a human being to love God. It's impossible because his justification is they're not of the same genus. They're not the same species. So he would argue that you have a dog. You, you don't really love your dog. You just say that. But you really love your dog? 
No, if your dog dies, he might be upset for a few moments or a day or two, but you really love your dog? No, because it's not the same species as you are. He's a deist, right? They believe that, you know, the first six presidents of the United States of America were deists. They're not Orthodox Christian. They were not Trinitarian Christian. So basically, they believe that God created the world, and he's an absentee landlord, basically. And he kind of, we kind of regulated ourselves, right? He created, and he let us deal with it, right? The Christian, which is a theistic tradition, obviously, they say the greatest demonstration of love by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is becoming that species. This is Thomas Aquinas' theology, who wrote the Summa Theologica, who was highly influenced by the likes of Abu Hamad al-Ghazali. You look at the structure of the Summa Theologica, you have the first part, which is called the Prima Pars, which talks about theology. Then you have the Segunda Pars, which talks about uh, his virtue uh, theory. And then the third part, the Tertia Pars, talks about Isa alayhi salam. He said, this is, the, this is the essence of the Summa. Right? So Imam Ghazali, if you look at the Ihya al Madin, and this is a must for everyone to have books of the Ihya in your house for barakah and for reading. Get books of the Ihya. The ulama used to say, if you have to sell your lihya, get the Ihya. <laughs> you have to sell your beard, get the Ihya. So if you look at the Ihya, what is the focus of the Ihya? Right at the center of the Ihya. Book number 20. The book about the Akhlaq al nabuwa About the comportment, the character of the Prophet Muhammad Because this is the goal. Isa alayhi salam is a messenger of God who was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had a pure heart and when the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refracted from her, reflected from his heart this is Ghazali's mirror Christology sometimes called his mirror Christology when it reflected from his pure heart those who did not have a basis of sharia they mis mistook the reflection for the essence it's like someone who jumps into a lake to grab the moon it's a reflection it's not the moon so the Sharia is absolutely fundamental. So we have to be, I was asked to talk about how to find the middle path to be balanced. To be balanced means you balance obedience and knowledge. We learn from those who came before us. We take heed from those who came before us. That many people have a lot of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they don't know what they're doing or why they're doing it. There's no knowledge. Why are you doing this? I don't know. I was told to do this. These people focus on orthopraxis. Then you have people who have a lot of knowledge and they can pontif pontificate, right? On a soapbox for hours and hours. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us, especially me. But they don't have obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happens then? They don't work on the heart. The heart becomes hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to a group of people in the Quran. After that, your hearts became hard, like stones, or even worse than stones, or like a donkey who carries books on his head. You don't gain any knowledge, you don't gain any benefit from their knowledge. There's nothing in the heart. The heart is very important. That's why this, this concept of ihsan, and the, the technical term for it is tasawuf. That's a technical term for ihsan. And this is found in the Quran. This is found in the Hadith. It's not taken from Hinduism. It's not taken from Buddhism. It's not invented in the third century. This is what Al-Junaid said. And he's mentioned in our creeds. Imam Al-Naqani mentions him. Ibn Ashr mentions him. Our knowledge, the knowledge of the Sufiya, is based is, is tied to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is Sufism? What is Tasawwuf? What is Ihsan? Cultivating prophetic characteristics to be like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do we do this? What is, I was again asked by Sidi Asif, practical advice. How do we cultivate prophetic characteristics? The best thing we can do is sit with ulama. Sit with the ulama. There's many in this area. Just sit with them, be in their presence. You might say, I, I don't benefit anything. They speak over my head. Just sit with them for a minute. When I was overseas, I sat with a great scholar. And my Arabic was terrible when I got there. 
and I wanted to get up and leave. And another brother said, don't just sit down, just listen. Sit down and, and listen. I said, I don't understand. And my broken mouth, I him to say, I don't understand anything. It's okay. Just one door. If you don't, if you can't listen, one door. Just watch him. Watch what he does. A picture's worth a thousand words. Sit with your ulama. There's angelic presence around them. This will affect your state. One glance of an alam. These things are real. Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim, he said that, you know, these people from the city, they're filled, ves they're filled vessels. They're filled with all these ideas and they, want to, and they want to come sit with me. They don't come as empty vessels. So they come and sit with me. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, so that means I should be quiet. I've already gone over my time. I'll end with this, inshallah. So they sit with me and they, we go back and forth about an issue or something and they leave and they don't benefit one iota from me. But then a Bedouin will come who's an empty vessel, who doesn't even know that he's not supposed to urinate in front of me. He'll urinate on my thigh. And I'll give him one nudra, one glance, and it'll change his life. Don't underestimate these things. Don't underestimate sitting with your ulama. This is the best advice I can give you. To have qurb, to have, to, to, uh, have nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the epitome, he is the epitome, he is the, the, the standard of, of our spiritual tradition. There's no such thing as a Sufi without being a Muslim. It's like saying I'm Jewish but I'm not a rabbi. It doesn't make any sense. The Prophet وسلم, his moral, his, his character, his sirah, his sunnah is the basis of our spiritual tradition. To be like the Prophet وسلم, To draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to purge ourselves, sit with the ulama, and take from them as kaab. They have, they have uh, pres prescriptions for diseases, amrad al qulub, that they'll give you, and you'll do them. And this is a process via purgativa, the Catholics call it. And they took from us, takhliya, to empty the, the, the nafs of, of, of terrible attributes or traits. And then after takhliya, there comes what? Tahliya, ornamentation of the nafs. A change, right? This happens to habitus, right? You do things for a while and it becomes woven into your very nature. But you have to be consistent. The Prophet said the, the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those that are little, but they're consistent, are consistent even if they're little. And then after that, you have tajliya, you have theophany, you have openings, you have futuhat. This is proven and tried over time. This is not, this, this is not some sort of mythical idea. This is something that's proven over time to work. Sit with the ulama. This is where it begins. You cannot achieve this without being with ulama. That's my, that's my spiel to use a Yiddish word. Thank you for listening. I'm sorry if I have voices. Um, <clears throat> incomprehensible. And I apologize to the ulama for going too long. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah.